Hello, and welcome to the Keep It Local Maine podcast, where we interview local business owners and Maine residents to learn more about what they do, who and what inspires them, and how they use their experiences to steer them into the future. My name is Todd Regalinski. And I am Kimberly Regalinski. And we are the publishers of Keep It Local Maine, a local magazine that helps to showcase local businesses to the people in and around their communities. Thank you for tuning into our weekly podcast that you, you can subscribe to on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. You can learn more about us at keepitlocalmaine.com and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram through the links in the show notes. Yes, and in this episode, we are talking with local Maine photographer, Stuart Smith. Stuart Smith has been a professional photographer for over 25 years. He specializes in weddings, high school seniors, model portfolios, headshots, families, events, and much more. Stuart is based out of Scarborough, and you can see his work at stuartsmithphotography.com. Welcome to the show, Stuart. Well, hello there. How are you? (laughs) Great. Thanks for coming. We're glad to have you in the studio here today. It's awesome. In As the our, studio. You make it sound so official. It's so, so official. So, um, yeah, so we're, we're really excited to have you here. And, and, you know, for those of you that don't know, Stuart actually is our um, photographer for Keep It Local Maine, too. So he's been working with us for, gosh, almost going on seven years now. Wow. And he shoots all of our covers. Well, and I, I think there's only been... I think there's only been three covers that Stuart has not done the photos for. Yeah. So we, I mean, we're, we're one of them being the first, which was my photo. So I was the original photographer. I just like <laughs> to make make sure I get that. Yes. Credit. Thank you for coming on board, Stuart. We appreciate that. Oh, that kind of hurts a little. So, so yeah. So I think we've done over a hundred, hundred plus covers now wow. with Stuart. So it's been a, it's been a long time. So Stuart, let me ask you. So. How did you get started in photography? Like, where where did it that passion start for you? How did that come about? Well, my influences were my sister. She took high uh, she was a high school photographer, like for the yearbook, and so she was allowed to take a camera home, and she'd take pictures of me and my friends. And then um, once I got into high school, I had a one of the teachers. He was a, actually a librarian. His name was Joe Sassai. He nurtured the fact that I was interested in photography. And um, it's kind of funny because watching my sister do the, the high school yearbook and be a part of it, I took on that as well when I was a sophomore in high school. I was the only sophomore uh, in the school to be a part of the yearbook. And then the junior year, I got more involved. And then the senior year, I pretty much did all the photography for the most part for the yearbook. And um, I've just really enjoyed the best feeling is to watch my friends look at my pictures or just people in general and, and to laugh or smile or, or like imagery causes emotion. Mm. So to watch my friends and family and, you know, even people I don't know pictures I would take of them watching them laugh, like I said, just to get an emotion, it gave me kind of like a, a rush. Like I, I loved the fact that I could make someone laugh or, cause an emotion without having to say anything. It was just taking a picture of them. And that's what really got me inspired to be a photographer. That's so cool that you can just use imagery to get emotions out of people. It's so cool to think of that. It's just such a, such an art form that you have. Thank you. Um, Yeah, it's really cool. And you, and you've worked with, I mean, celebrities, you've worked with models, you've worked with athletes. I mean, you're, you're very humble in, in the work that you've done. <laughs> and, you know, what, what would you say is probably one of the biggest um, wins as a photographer? Like if you had to pick, you know, a, a really big win that you're like, you, you, that was that moment that you said, wow, I, I think I've made it as a photographer. I think I've really made some headway in this business. Yep. I would definitely say um, I shot the New England Patriot cheerleaders swimsuit calendar, mm-hmm. and it took me four years of submitting my work to them. Like they shut the door in my face immediately the first time I submitted pictures to them. The second year, they're like, oh, thanks, you know, but we're all set. The third year, since I decided that's something I wanted to do, um, I started having friends and more like models I was um, photographing them more like at the beach, you know, swimsuit stuff. And um, as I would work with them, I looked at what they were doing for the Patriot Cheerleaders calendar, and I was mimicking that, but I would add my own flavor to it, like the way I would light the models and stuff. 
So over this five years of, you know, wanting to do it, I was submitting pitches to them all the time until they, I don't know, they didn't get sick of me, but the, I think the clincher was at the end when they finally said, yes, they wanted me to do it was I sent them photos I took and then I sent them photos from their own calendar. And I said, Mm -hmm. these are better than what you have and you need to hire me. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> wow, that's that's bold. Yeah. That's a bold way to do yeah. it. That's that's amazing. And guess what? I got a call. I got a call, and they're like, "Yeah, actually, Stu, you're you're onto something. We want you to do it." Anything I tell people, I tell people all the time: never take no for an answer. If you want something bad mm-hmm. enough, you every door that shuts, another door opens. I preach this all the time. And I lead by my own example. Like, I'm not going to tell someone something to do if I don't believe in it myself. Mm, that's great. I, I like how it's it's a combination of persistence, which is is always important. But it was also a matter of of, of practice. Yep. You, you were, you're actually practicing and working on your craft as you were being persistent, not just doing the same thing over and over right. and over and, and just kind of being persistent that way. You actually... We're looking for ways to improve, right. which I think is it's great. is key to that, that, those two working together. Yep. You, you're saying that. It, I, I'm glad you brought that up because that's the thing. You can bother someone, but if you're not doing anything to better your craft or mm-hmm. if you're, you know, like I could keep bothering you guys like, hey, I want to work with you guys. But if I have nothing to show you or if I'm sending you the same thing, you're going to keep telling me no. But you, mm-hmm. if you see that I'm actually striving for perfection or striving to be better then you're gonna then i would imagine you would listen to me after a while Mm. Hmm. so kim kind of mentioned a lot of the different types of shoots that you do weddings high school senior portraits family portraits all kinds of different uh, shoots Mm -hmm. how do you work that practicing that that bettering of your craft into doing such a wide variety of shoots or is it i mean how do you how do you think of that is it a lot of different styles or is it kind of one style just applied in different ways yeah it's that and um you know i i'm not gonna lie like i have my weaknesses like there's certain things that i i uh i still definitely need work on i go i go online a lot like i'm on instagram a lot i constantly look at other people's work just to get inspiration that's how i've always done it i used to spend hours and hours at borders going through all the magazines, all the fashion magazines, and even the wedding magazines to to see people's styles and to learn how to pose people. I think one of the biggest things that photographers um, lack in experience is either lighting or composition. And um, posing people is not easy. So like mm-hmm. I, I got a, a message, uh, actually someone tagged me today on a Facebook post about a girl wants to be a model and, you know, a bunch of people got tagged in it. And when I got tagged in it, I just went right on and said, hey, listen, I thank the person for tagging me. But if you want to model you need, and you want to work with a photographer that does modeling portfolios, pick the person that has the experience. Anyone, when, and, I, and I don't mean to discredit people, it's like anyone can take beautiful photos, but at the same time, I've worked a long time to build relationships with the modeling agencies and I know what they want and I know what they don't want. They don't want to have Mm -hmm. a kid that's 10 years old, look like she's trying to be 15, 16. You know what I mean? Um, Mm -hmm. They don't want the kids to look older. They don't want something. um, uh, They they want like lifestyle type shots, mostly here in new England that replicate um, like LL bean, very natural natural makeup they don't want glamour models the agencies don't Mm -hmm. so it's trying to use that experience and there's so many different facets of photography you know Mm. that's just one i mean i I hope that makes sense from what Mm. what you just asked me yeah no it totally makes sense i i think that in any kind of any kind of craft and and i think any kind of anything that you do can become a craft in that you are you're studying it you're always trying to get better and, and you work at it. But in that, the experience, if a person is really, as, as you've talked about, working at improving themselves, that experience just becomes richer and richer. And, and at the end of the day, that's what you're, that's what you're hiring someone for. Right. That's what you're, you're seeking them out for. That's what you're, you're looking for in you know, artwork or, or whatever they're producing. 
you know, you go to a woodworker because they've been doing it for 20 years and their stuff is gorgeous and you know that it's going to be, you know, it's well quality. done, yep. you know. Yep. Quality. Yeah. And the same thing with, with you. It's, and, and I've seen you do this when we, when you, uh, when we do shoots, just the way that you work with people. And it's, it's very interesting when you do shoots for us because these are not models and a lot of business owners, they're not necessarily the ones who want to be in front of the camera. And not not because they oh I I don't want to be seen or anything like that. It's just it's not their natural comfort zone. Right. They're used to working in their business, and you do such a great job putting them at ease and working with them. And I'm always amazed by that. And I I have to think that has so much to do with the experience <laughs> that you've had over the years of just of working with people and and almost developing a little bit of a rapport immediately. Yeah, it's fu- funny you say that because I'm gonna straight up answer. I'm going to just say I am not the best photographer on the planet. I accept that full heartedly, but I will say people will hire me just, I think sometimes just because of who I am. <laughs> I, I mean, I think that's like the coolest thing. People will hire me because of how I make people feel or how I interact with them. And not mm-hmm. that they call me and say, Hey, listen, I know we're not going to get the best shot from you, but we like you. It doesn't work like that. Well, that trust factor there. I think you think you have to build that trust with people, and and I think mm-hmm. you know when when people trust you, you know they they can feel that. You know. Yeah, I do get put in situations where, you know, I I uh, I had a bout with colon cancer, and I I uh, I've made it public, so I'm not afraid to talk about it or whatever. And um, I had someone contact me just for the mere sake that I had cancer, and this person it was a female had cancer and she knew she was going in for chemo and she was going to lose her hair and she wanted beautiful images of her before she went in and she Mm -hmm. called me just for that just for the sake that she knew i already i've I've been Mm -hmm. there and i mean we did get beautiful photos and i would be lying if i told you i didn't get emotional through the shoot like you know i Mm -hmm. i talk with people throughout the day uh, uh, through the shoot and that's how sometimes I feel like I get the best from people people ask me how did you get a shot like that of that person and the secret is just listen to people you guys are mm. you guys do the same thing you listen to your client I see the interaction you guys have with these guys everyone we work with loves you and the reason being is because you listen you you want the best mm. for them and that's how I am with with my people and that's why that's why we um, we do so well together. Mm. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. And I think that's a, that's another example of experience, not just, not the experience of the experience that you bring, but also like giving the client an overall experience. One hundred percent. Because yeah. you know that's that's something that you can't really put a price on. I'm mm. telling you right now, these kids that I'm doing senior pictures of, I mean, parents are giving me hugs because of the experience that I'm trying to give the kids, like I want them to have fun. I want this to be their day. I want it to be a, I want it to be something that they'll cherish and not something they, Mm -hmm. a lot of these people, some of, some of these kids, they don't really care to have their pictures done, but when it's all done, they, they're happy. And the, and like Mm -hmm. I said, the, the messages the parents are sending me and just the gratitude they're showing me. I mean, that's why I love what I do. Yeah, mm. that's great. So let me ask you this. So what what has been, um, as a photographer, as a business owner, what has been one of your biggest challenges? Um, there's a lot of us. There's a lot of photographers out there. And I mean, mm-hmm. people right now, people, you have bargain shoppers. And like, I feel like my wedding prices are right in the middle of the road. But I don't know how many times I've had people call me, they want me to shoot their wedding. And then I see them later, they went with another photographer and they tell me how they wish they would have went with me. I hear that a, a lot or like with senior pictures. And like you were talking about earlier, sometimes price, you pay a little extra, but you, you're going to get what you want. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll have people call me and ask me what my prices are. And I'll ask them, have you seen my work? And they're like, no, mm-hmm. I found you online, but um, I haven't seen your pictures yet. I legit tell them, go look at my photos. And if you like what you see, then call me back. Like, I, mm-hmm. I, I, I don't even tell them my prices. So I'd say a big thing is just people price, price shopping. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, and I'm in, 
a business where there's a, I mean, who doesn't like taking pictures, you know? Mm -hmm. I think it's funny because I, I've always wanted to, I've always wanted to, you know, kind of get into photography, but then I kind of realized that I'm, I'm actually one of those people. I don't really enjoy taking pictures as much as I would like to. I I want to want to be a photographer. (laughs) It's not my thing. I I would much rather sit here and talk uh, on a microphone to people than I guess take photographs. So that, I, I guess I'm raising my hand as like, who doesn't want to be a photographer? I guess I. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but that's only because I've, I, it's partially too, because I see your work and I'm like, uh, well, I'm not going to do that. Well, so and partially you're an introvert too. Well, yeah. That's, that's, yeah, but Todd, that's, why, that, that's why it works out well for me to be down here in the basement all the time. I think you're seriously <laughs> scarred from the photo shoot I had you do with, with me and my friend Anastasia yes. that day. <laughs> It was, that was like negative 30. The winds were gusting at like 80 miles an hour. It was like, Ugh. that was crazy. And your poor friend, she was wearing heels uh. on the beach. I was like, oh, that's that was a bad decision. Yeah, we still talk about <laughs> was, it. We still talk about it. Even you and I, we talk about it. That was the coldest day. Oh, that was ridiculous. Wow. That was ridiculous. That, that, that actually, that that should be like a... Uh, that's a that's a part two of your biggest challenge. <laughs> it's weather. weather. There's a lot yeah. of photographers, and then that one particular photo shoot. Yeah. Well, you uh, just made me think of something. So I, I, I'll say this really quick. Doing a wedding, mm-hmm. you know, like you guys are getting married in this beautiful uh, environment. You're telling me, oh, I want to shot with this area and that area, and then the day of the wedding, it rains. And the thing that I will say that separates me from you know, people that don't have the experience and why you want a photographer that does have experience is because they know how to handle a situation. Every mm. sa- every wedding that I shoot for the majority, you have to become MacGyver and figure out, <laughs> you you know, like yeah. you, you have to adapt to the environment and, and, right. and then your, your, um, everything get your, uh, options get less when it rains. And then they right. send, they put you in a room and you're like, okay, well, and then you just have to make it work. Yeah. yeah. Great. And again, that comes down to the experience. experience That's yeah. what you're paying for is, yep. is that person Absolutely. to be able to go back into the, the file cabinet of their brain and go, oh, wait, I did something like this one time. Or I remember I, I read this or I remember I saw someone do this. Yep. Let me try this. Yep. That's what well, you get. And that's the, that is the difference. Yeah. So now the big question is uh, who, or not big question, I say this is a question, who or what inspires you Um, besides New Edition? (laughs) (laughs) MC Hammer. This is his thing. (laughs) People people don't know this, but Stu is like a dyed-in-the-wool, old-school 90s Mm. R&B fan. Yeah. Like, well, actually, like late late 80s, 90s, right? I love it all, man. I grew up, my mom yeah. listened to Stevie Wonder. I grew up on R&B, on uh, Motown. Mm. Yeah. She played, she she listened to Diana Ross and Dionne Warwick on Saturdays while vacuuming. So I don't know how many times I've heard the song Walk On By, but. Um... <laughs> <laughs> except, except you hear Vac On By, <laughs> Vac On By. <laughs> oh, man. No, um, my biggest inspiration as far as like, who do I, tr- when I say mimic or whatever, Herb Ricks, he's like my favorite photographer. And I've tried to take pages out of him, his book, so to speak. He's very simple. He doesn't use a lot of um, environment. He just, the models that he's photographed, the photos are very simple. And that's what I try mm-hmm. to do with the people that I work with. And I mean, another inspiration is the man upstairs. I mean, I'm I'm all about shooting these scenics. I, I people are like, oh, look how beautiful you this photo that you took. And I'm like, well, I'm not the one mm-hmm. taking full credit. God's the one that put it in front of me, and I'm just a guy documenting it. I can I can't explain or express how uh, therapeutic it's been for me to get into scenic photography. Mm-hmm. I can just hop in my car and you know go listen to New Edition and. <laughs> Get to me, get, get to the uh, the place that I'm taking pictures of. But you know, I'll go grab my Dunkin' Donuts coffee, and you know, by the time I get to where I'm going, I'm kind of on screech. But I I I love photographing scenics, and it's a great way. Like, not everyone's a person people photographer, so I've made some uh, really good friends just that like going on, you know, hopping in the car and doing a little road trip and shooting with me. 
that that's it's a great way to spend time with people. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you've got some really amazing scenics that you've done and just your work, I think just over the last few years that I've just been seeing your work get better and better and better with scenics. Thank you. And it's just uh yeah, it's they really are again bringing it back to that emotion. I mean, some of those photos, those scenics that you're taking um, and that you've taken, I just noticed even just when you post them on social media, just the the feedback that you get and the emotions that those strike up in people. I know there was one with the boat that you took and it was over on the marsh. Yeah. And every time I think of that photo and I look at that photo, I, I just caption that as heaven. I mean, yeah. it just... It's so it's such a powerful image, Thank you. you know, and I just whenever I see that, I, I, I think of that. I think the biggest things about scenics are instead of people is people. I mean, uh, it's relatable. You know what I mean? Mm. If I take a picture of the pier in the morning, like at a sunrise or a sunset and it's a cool shot. A lot of people know about the old Orchard Beach Pier. So people I'm going to get more attention on that than a person photo for the most part. Because everyone can relate. Mm. Mm. That's great. So let me ask you this. Someone that's starting out, someone that might have a passion or want to get started in photography, some someone that's looking to just start to pick up a camera and is empowered to kind of get started, what's one piece of advice you could give them? What's one thing they should really um, do or you know, what's the first step they should take for someone that's looking to get into photography? Well, nowadays, these guys are spoiled. You can go on YouTube and learn stuff. Like, I had to go to college for it, um, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, learn about my lighting and stuff. So I would totally go on YouTube and just try to engulf myself into, you know, if you want to photograph people, I would type in people photography. Um, I would get mm -hmm. my friends. I mean, this is how I started. I was photographing people. For the first year that when I, after I got done college and I moved to Maine, I was I wasn't making any money that's for sure. Um, I worked at a, a camera store in the Maine Mall called Ritz Camera, and I was taking pictures of my friends on the side. And I had three people. I called them my my three muses. I had my friend Elaine, Sue, and Tiffany. These three girls, I would take out and I'd photograph them all the time. I thank them to this day for for uh, allowing me to and for spending the time with me to to practice my craft so once again i'd go to borders i'd spend hours looking at magazines and then i'd call them and i'd try try out the techniques that i've i learned you know by looking at the photos so whatever you whatever inspires you we you know reference like go on to instagram or go google whatever inspires you google it and and then um, use that as a reference and then mm -hmm. so educate um, educate and practice educate themselves educate and, and it's a great yeah. way i i mean to this day these three women that i rattled up i mean we're still good friends because um awesome. because of what we did together i mean it's a great way to bond with your friends you know mm, it's a great, great way to spend time with each other mm. yeah that's great Okay, well, we're, we're approaching the end of our time here, so I want to ask you one last question and kind of get out of business mode here. What's your favorite place in Maine? Yeah, do you have a favorite place that you like to shoot, or do you have a favorite place that you like to go just to spend time with? Just what's a favorite place that you that you go to, or some of your favorite restaurants? You know, What are some of your favorite things about Maine? I love going down to Pine Point. I've been going there a lot lately, down to the Fisherman's Co-op, and shooting the mm -hmm. sunsets there. That's been really nice. I love going to the Nubble Headlight in York. Um, mm -hmm. I love I love being there. That's always a, 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 a cool spot. I don't know how many hours I've spent down on the beach uh, with the pier. I mean, the pier and I are like best friends. We're bros. Like, I, I love <laughs> being down there. I mean, I don't know how many photos of the pier I have. I, I mean, countless. And I'm from Rumford, Maine. So I like going back home. Um, it's a, it's nice to be around friends and, um, you know, just, uh, being around the places that I grew up around. I mean, it's changed a lot, but that's, I, I love uh, going there. And then as far as I, do you ask me about restaurants and stuff or. Yeah. What's, what's one of your favorite places to eat or for, for main restaurants? Where, where do you, where do you go when you oh, treat man. yourself? Well, that. 
I'm going to give it a plug anyway. The Kyle Loon down in Sockets. <laughs> oh, I knew it was coming. <laughs> I knew it was coming. You can't say that. It's not in me. Yeah, sorry, give us no, a main gonna, one. Oh, we're going <laughs> to... We're gonna have to throw a flag on that okay. one. Sorry, Stu. Okay. I, okay. I know you and the Kowloon are, are tight, but this is a main podcast. Okay, 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 yeah. okay, okay. You can put that on. You can do that on the Keep It Local Saugus podcast. Yeah, yeah. How about that? Okay, 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 okay. My bad. You know, it's kind of funny. I I used to love going to uh, when I lived in Portland. I uh, Bruno's. I love their food there. What's the su- there's a place this I mean, summer that you've been going us, to? None of us are really going too far I like, right now. I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think that's why I'm thrown off. Uh, I like O'Reilly's Cure. That's always cool. Oh, and the Dunstan Tap and Table I like. Um, Portland yeah. Pie. Uh, they have this. Um, is it's not the Harbor Master Pizza, but it's some. It's um, I get it with a barbecue sauce base, and then they have um, the grilled chicken. And um, mm-hmm. uh, caramelized onions and the uh, um, bacon, and I'm telling you, yeah, that's that, a, that is that's the best pizza. Yeah. That's the best pizza. Oh yeah, that's well, I mean, bacon on anything. Yeah. Can we can we just be honest? You, you had me at bacon stew. Okay, okay. You had me at bacon. <laughs> hey, you had me at bacon. And I gotta throw in one more thing. So tequila frogs down in Old Orchard. I'm telling you right now, they have this thing. It's a family barbecue platter. Now I know I mentioned the the Kowloon and I. You won't believe what I'm about to tell you. But I honestly, if I had to choose the poo poo platter or this family platter down at Tequila Frogs, I would choose the family platter down there. <laughs> I swear. Wow. I swear. It, it, oh, wow. Listen, man, they smoke their are we, ribs. Are we going to have to edit that? Are you going to are you going to get your 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 like frequent poo poo platter card? Cal no. revoked for no. that? <laughs> no, revoked. the Wong brothers love me. That's OK. <laughs> 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 Which is true. The one the, like when we went down there, like they they greeted. He was royalty. Yep. I, I was surprised they didn't have a photo of him, the autographed on the on the wall. <laughs> did they hook us up with a drink? <laughs> I I can't remember. Yeah. I'm sure they hooked you yeah. up. I I didn't have too much. I love those guys, but I'm telling you right now, and it's too bad because they're closing next week. But next summer, if you can get down to uh, Tequila Frogs and get their family platter. Man, it is amazing. Everything falls right off the cool. bone. It is so good. I'm not even kidding. Well, there we go. The stew stamp of approval. Yep. But I like to go. Yeah. I'll go anywhere. But I mean, the, the places that I just rattled off. I like to get my breakfast down at um, the Strike Zone down in Old Orchard. That's a place I like to frequent. Nice. nice. Yep. Well, thank you. Well, now see now that you've talked about food, and we know that you actually put off having your supper yep. before you came yes, on the, you can go the have podcast. Supper so now. we really appreciate you putting that off. We know that's a big deal, and now you're really hungry because you've listed about twenty different restaurants. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hold on. Uh, so I got to throw in one more. Oh boy. No, there's a place up in Mexico. It's called Dick's, and it's a breakfast place that my dad and I used to go to. And I, I'm just gonna go nostalgic on you guys, but like I go there every time I go up back at home. I love to go there because it just reminds me of, you know, uh, um, uh, the time I got to spend with him. But the breakfast, you could buy, it's like everything there is so, um, when I say it's delicious and totally affordable. I love that place. Like the Great. kind of breakfast where you you're even wondering if you're going to need to eat dinner that yep. night. Yep. Yeah. That no joke. sort of a thing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, nice. I love me a nice. breakfast I like love, that. Yeah. Oh, I love me some breakfast. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, thank you again, Stu, for for being on the show. We really appreciate yes. it. Yes. Uh, be sure to check out Stu's uh, website and all of his uh, social media links. We'll put those in the show notes, and you can follow him on Instagram. He's on Facebook and on Twitter. All those places. All the all of them will be listed in the show notes. Thank you very much, Stu. Yes. Thank you, Stu. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yes, thanks for coming, Stu. And again, we're, we're very honored and uh, very thankful to be working with you for these past seven years. I feel the same way. I love you guys. We love you, Stu. Oh, <laughs> you say that to all the magazine. <laughs> <laughs>